me in. All right. We're all live. Except for the camera that hit the floor. <laughs> Comments. Good day, sir. How's Ron today? I'm just testing some things, trying some new features. And miraculously fixed my, uh, hold on, I got to kill some audio here. Drive myself crazy. The hot end on my um, D6, it was oozing really bad and ruined a print a while back. This one. <laughs> and um, hey, there's Ryan too. Ron is Ron today. Well, it's better than being somebody else, I guess. Wow, do you ever see the delay when you jump to YouTube and that? Wow. I was on a live stream with somebody else and uh watching their content and then thought while well, i'm sitting here i might as well do stuff so today i uh not that one not that one i did some um i tried out this little gadget just now the uh z catch um, if you guys can see that, if it'll focus in. I thought it was kind of gimmicky when I bought it. I saw it online beforehand, and it was on my list of things to look at because I knew they were going to be at Earth. And I bought one, and I bought the, the socket set that goes with it. And um, I thought it was kind of gimmicky, but I just it's easy. You just throw it on. I put it on here. I had to wait till it heated up so I get the socket to fix. It was so much plastic stuck on it. And then you just move this thing and it holds the, the block in place and you just snugged it up by turning the bottom here. And uh, finger tight is probably safe. You can see it's still got tons of crap just dripping off of it from when it was dripping before. So I'm just going to let it run for like an hour or so today and probably print something with it if I... This is where we can do the how brave are we? Pretty brave. Um, don't do that at home, kids. No kids. Um, but yeah, it uh I hope that it sealed it up good enough. I should jump back to comments so I can see if anybody's saying anything. Yeah, Z catch. Yeah, but if I'm doing it by hand, I also, if I break something, if I break something, it was my fault. <laughs> it wasn't that, oh, the thing wasn't read. I, I thought about getting a small, like a real light duty torque wrench for that. But you know what? If it leaks, I just tighten it some more. If it, when it stops leaking, I stop tightening it. That's kind of the way I plan on doing it. And I'll just check it more often. Now that I've got this thing, it's easy to do. I just, I'll just keep it in here and I'll just, you know, pull it out when I need it. So I can't remember how much it was. It wasn't cheap, but it's a fairly neat little machine piece of stuff. And it's got a, a kick pin in it so that you can, uh, this is one of the things I was kind of not sure about. Oh, does it act, it, really? It releases the socket as well, but there's a, uh, a little pin in it. Hold on. That one. There's a uh, a pin in the middle here that um, as I run my hand into the hot end, that's always good. There's a little pin that you push an ejector at the bottom. I know that's weird. And uh, so if you get the hot end stuck in there, you can push it out. 
and it releases the socket apparently as well because the socket was not coming off before that so yeah it releases the little ball on the side so you can get the socket off easier hmm. i'll give them credit for designing something that's actually useful Yeah, I've just been too lazy to go look for the brush in the other room. I was using it on the uh, yeah the nozzle ejection seat. So if you don't like it, you just click it and boom, it's gone. Today, we're, the other thing I want to do today was try out some of the new features in StreamYard since the last time I streamed, which is the ticker across the bottom, which I see is turned off since I left. So they've added that. I'm currently multi-simul streaming. It's my new term, simul streaming to Twitch and YouTube. So that's one of the things they've added that I like. Um, they've added some kick people out rules, which, you know, could be handy at times when you get somebody that's kind of being a doink in the thing. You can boot them. Um, so, yeah. So if I have somebody in the guest section here and they're being a pain, just kick them out. So we tried that the other day with the mad monkey he was in, I think. So, yeah. I never noticed before that it tells you how many people are tuned in from each platform. So I don't know if that was there before or not. Oh. Huh. Interesting. I didn't mean to take you guys away from more important things. I just was just playing around with things. And at first I set it, the YouTube one to uh, unlisted like I normally do. And um, then I couldn't test the comments and stuff because I couldn't see it as a public person and stuff. So I wanted to test all that. When they come up in here, they come up in different things. Yep, and LTMW on Twitch. I've had a Twitch account there for a long time. When I started this plan to do this stuff, I was going to use Twitch and not YouTube. But YouTube's just the place to be still at this point. But if it goes sideways, as they keep changing the rules, we'll uh, jump there if I have to. And I'm not looking for big... big widespread public grow my channel type stuff. So whether it's on Twitch or here, it doesn't, or YouTube, it doesn't really matter to me. StreamYard talks to both of them. And on the, the low level account, I don't have the super account. This is the first level, whatever they call it, the basic paid account for StreamYard. I can do two at the same time. So two places. I did notice that Twitch is faster. Like, there's less lag to Twitch than there is to YouTube. YouTube lag is significantly more today anyways. So, yeah. What's everybody else up to today? No, they didn't add true co-host yet. Just the the ability to have your guests that are going to be on screen in the green room, whatever, to have them sign in so that you know who they are. And it also that gives you the ability to, to send them back to the green room. I don't know if you can kick. I think you can block them. I'm not sure if they get totally turfed out of the green room or not. I haven't tried it yet. Um, haven't had to hope I never have to but you know that there are certain individuals that can get kind of out of hand and that's a good way to get rid of them so state the rules mess up with the rules you're gone simple 
my next thing I really I want them to do co-host so that you can have somebody else kind of watching and handling stuff. And um Something weird just happened. Is that me? I want them to do 1080p because I really want to start doing some playing in ZBrush and just do Hangout type ZBrush stuff. And uh, it's just totally pointless when you can't read the menus for people watching. It's just frustrating. I know I've been on streams before like that and like F that. So... <clears throat> Another show and telly type thing. I was on um, Graybeard's stream the other day when he was doing a uh, some work on a Monoprice Select, the Mini. And uh, he was using a plastic razor blade to scrape the glue off the bed so it wouldn't gouge into the bed. I thought, wow, that's pretty smart. So thanks, Amazon, for, I don't know forget how much they were maybe 10 bucks it comes with like 10 or 20 blades and so when i do my next um wham bam install i'll use this to uh clean the goop off i also have a mini that i've never really done much with that came with big gouges in the in the fake tack on it and then i've added a couple more when i was using it so uh i thought yeah I'll switch that out. I bought some of that, the AliExpress, two pieces of magnet stuff. I thought for that little one, it'll be fine. It's only a 150 ish or 120 ish square bed. So, but yeah. So we'll see how that works. It's got a ton of blades. If I melt a couple or anything, it's not a big deal. <laughs> I like this. It comes with a steel blade in it, in backwards when you open it. And then, of course, they give you the safety cover, too, you know, because you don't want to hurt yourself with that plastic blade. So, sillies. But I thought it was funny. It came with a steel blade. So, wouldn't want to accidentally buy that, you know, for a kid thinking, oh, they can't hurt themselves with this, and it comes with a steel blade in it. It was backwards, but, you know. So, now I'm just going to fiddle for a while. If you guys want to hang around, I'm going to... uh install Prusa software on here so that I can slice. Every time I go to their... The last couple of days, it's been rough. You go on to Twitter and people are starting to get their minis and it's like, yeah, I'm the idiot that waited four days to... or three days, whatever it was. Yeah, three days to order mine. So, yeah, mine's not coming until the new year probably. But that's okay. I got lots to keep me busy. Software. Prusa Slicer. Yes, plastic hurts. It's almost like a polyethylene, the blades on that. It's kind of, it's not as, not as stiff as uh, PLA is or anything. It's, it's more like a plastic bottle stiffness. So, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, it would be good for cleaning goop off a stove or anything too, because it shouldn't dig into the, the finish at all. So, yeah, you never know. Yeah, Mr. Buttram's back in the 28th. I don't know if I'll do anything tonight. I did get all my parts finally for my, uh... ooh, just now? Okay, assemble it now, assemble it now, assemble it now, assemble it now, assemble it now. I'll do mine at the same time. I can simul stream. <laughs> they, um, I got my parts finally for my uh, pallet, so I'm going to probably do that later today if everything works out that way. I'm gonna do some chores around the house first. I got a ton of those to do between now and Christmas. So I'm gonna try and do a good good run on that this afternoon and then 
might stream tonight. Have to see how it shakes out. It's possible to probable. The um, do the install on that stuff. Yeah, Duo Assembly. That sounds kind of wrong, but. <laughs> Okay, you, you put this one in. Okay, no, no, wait. No, wait for me. No, go. Okay, okay, I caught up now. Go. <laughs> Could be fun. Uh, I can do a couple. I've got two of them here. But I think, did you get yours? Did you get the pre-printed parts or do you still have to print your parts? Yeah, I printed my own too. Partly because the the ones that I got that came with my first one here when I got it, it uh on this one they're white parts. So when I picked when I ordered the next one, I said, "Yeah, no, I can print my own. That way, I can print them orange, black, whatever I want." I think I'll do. Well, on the, I think I printed a bunch of black ones because I'm going to replace these as well. So I printed a bunch of the... Nah, it's been raining here today, Ron. We've got... It's like in the 40s Fahrenheit here today. It was a skunk in my yard. Last night, dog woke me up at like 20 after 5. 521, actually. And I had to go out. I was like, great. Said some bad words and get all my gear on go out and it wasn't that cold but man must have woke a skunk up um i did mine in pet g thought they'd be a little bit stronger more flexible ish when i was putting the pieces together so i didn't crack any of them but i don't know what these were these were whatever they were shipping at the time what happened there well, that was neat. No. You guys can probably still hear me, so I won't say the word I was just going to say that starts with a f sound. Exploit just tanked on me. Just crashed, exited. I'm running the, um, whatever they call it public test release so it'll happen and it just update i just updated it this morning so yeah I don't mind pet doing pet G. I do it. I use. I I have trouble with it on the CR10s because none of them are enclosed. I find that running pet G on the Mark III in the lock enclosure helps. Helps keep the temperature more solid, and I usually run twenty-five to fifty percent fan, even though they always used to tell you not to. Glue stick on the bed so it'll let go more than making it stick, and. Uh, but when I try and pet, print PETG on the S4 or the CR10s, it always lifts at the edges. It just can't keep the heat on the bed good enough. And I've looked at the, the silicone pads, but they're so bloody expensive. Like, it's going to cost me well over 200 bucks for one for the S5. I'll probably end up getting one eventually, but it's cheaper to build an enclosure, so I think I'm going to do that first. I've got a local uh, company here that has a great big... Um, laser cutter 
think it'll do like three feet by four feet kind of size, something like that. And um, yeah, I've had bad luck lately with, um, I bought some of the Amazon basic stuff when they were selling that up here on amazon.ca. I got some of that and their pet G I am not a fan. I picked up a couple of rolls of that recycled stuff at Earth. I want to try that soon to see how it goes. But I recently picked up some from uh, 3D Printing Canada. I'm going to try theirs too and see see how it works. Yeah, Atomic's damn near impossible to get up here without paying through the nose. Although I've had good luck buying um, my resin, the Soriatech stuff from amazon.com and having it shipped here comes here flawless like two three hundred bucks worth of resin right to my door no duty no nonsense that stuff can't be like there's no paperwork with it there's no way they should be shipping chemicals like that across the border without the right paperwork even but i've got two loads of it through so far with no trouble um because they were out of the one i wanted the first time so i had to order more and um but i got jerked around by dhl again with my uh Palette S parts. Yeah, I'll go into that when I do that. That's a fiasco. Hate DHL. Ron, you'll like this one. DHL shipped it from the States to me, to my house here. At some point during that, it went, I forget what city it went to in the States. And then suddenly it went from DHL. All of a sudden, another little link came up to a Canada Post number for that package i was like what so they it looks like they brokered it added their usual ten dollar plus bs tax fee which i shouldn't have to pay because i paid hst on the order which i still don't think anyways that's complicated but so i'd already paid tax so then they charged me i don't know 20 some odd dollars total with the ten dollar fee and whatever it was in tax and then, but they didn't even, DHL didn't even deliver the damn thing. I had to go to Canada Post and pick it up. And it, ga it gave another message in the Canada Post one about uh, how they tried to deliver to the house. Wrong. I've got a ring cam and another one. They didn't. Hey there, John Mack. They didn't come to my house and try it at all. They just dropped the slip to go pick it up at Canada Post in the door, in the mailbox. It's like, what a bunch of pricks. They, um... But it said that they couldn't, they, they had to send it to my new address. Well, it's the same address. It's the last time they sent me stuff. I haven't moved in five years, so wrong. It was just a way for them to ding me for the fee without having to fight with me about it. So I gave Mosaic a bit of a hard time, and they helped me out there and worked it out. So I got my HST back instead, so it balanced out. But... What a nonsensical thing. You buy a product from a Canadian website of a Canadian company, Mosaic, downtown Toronto. I've been to their office. I know that's where they are. I order it. They ship out of the stage for logistics reasons, which I kind of understand. But I hope that that changes the next time they have to do this. And then, and then I got to pay more import a brokerage fee from DHL who didn't even deliver the damn thing. They didn't even do it. So, yeah, next time I get to talk to the Mosaic people in person, I'm going to bend the rear about that a little bit because it's just crazy. I know DHL is evil every time. Like when I get my, eventually, whenever I get my Prusa Mini, it'll have another 50 or $60 fee on it from DHL just because they can. And if you don't pay, you don't get the product and you got to pay to ship it back. It's just BS. They wouldn't let me, John. I tried that. It would have been cheap. Well, not quite. No, by the time, because they had free shipping, but then I paid the DHL fee. So, yeah, it would not have been cheaper to drive to their office because it's downtown Toronto. You got to either pay to park or take the GO train. So, yeah, it wouldn't have been, but it would have been faster because it took 30 some odd days to get it here as well. But that's, they had a lot of problems apparently getting stuff, getting their end of the custom stuff worked out. So obviously it didn't work. Yeah, I thought about having it ship 
to my, I've got a mailbox place that I use in Niagara Falls, New York. I thought about that, but at this time of year, who wants to be crossing the border with all the people going shopping? Not me. So I took what I thought was the easiest way, but yeah. Yeah, I'm making a list of stuff to pick up at, at Murph. If the Copperhead hot end gets gets funded and everything, that might be the way to pick it up. <laughs> I don't know if they're going to get funded or not. For John Mack that was late, I used this little Z-catch unit to uh, tighten up the hot end on this. It's been sitting here since before Earth because I had this print fail. That a lot? Was it, looks, and when I look at it now, it's like it shifted twice at least horizontally. It shifted to here, and then it shifted to there before it failed. And uh, it failed because it was a big glob of brown snot on it that had dripped off of it. So I just try to avoid DHL. Anyway, this thing worked actually better than I thought. I thought it was gimmicky and that, but they were at they were sitting almost right behind me at Earth. So I uh, they didn't know that because they said, "Oh, where are you here?" I said, "Right behind you, like literally ten feet that way." But anyways, um. Yeah, I tried it out and it, it works really well. Better than I thought. It just saved me a whole day of ripping this small well, afternoon of ripping this thing apart. Change a nozzle mid print. Yikes. Why'd you have to do that? Hey, Colin's here too. Hey, Colin, how's it going? Haven't seen you around much. Good to see you. Sort of see you typing. You know what I mean. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that'll do it. Yes, way better than the fill try. Not as much of a scam. I mean, this thing's like machined really nice. Like they've done a nice job, you know, and it, it shockingly worked. My only thinking is like, I can't use it with a volcano because it's too wide here, but. I don't know, but I'm going to try. My next plan is to, a, uh, one of my projects is to convert the CR10 S5 over to direct drive and um, put a volcano on it and a bigger nozzle and see what kind of trouble I can get into with that and put the wham bam on it. What else do I have to do to that one? Oh, Easy Able that I got. I bought some of those from uh, TH3D on their Black Friday sale. That cost me import duty as well, but oh well. Um, and I considered that day putting it in two smaller orders so it would come through, the, through customs better, but oops. If I would have had to pay double shipping, it probably would have cost me about the same anyways. Yeah, the fill -a dry was a dangerously stupid product. <laughs> I feel bad that, that Walter invested in it. But they, him and Chris Riley did a good job educating the rest of us so that we don't get in that kind of trouble with it. Yeah, the Easy Able looks like a good thing. It's weird because I bought um, induction sensors from AliExpress like, I don't know, a couple of years ago at least with intentions of using them on one of the printers back then. And then I remember I bought one and then I found out that I bought the wrong one. I forget whether it would or wouldn't work with, with steel. I can't remember which way it was and the one I bought whatever it was, whichever printer it was for, I don't even remember. There was questions about whether it would work. And um, 
then it got pushed aside for ones that came with them, like the Prusas. And that's, I learned two good things from my Mark II and Mark III experiences, which is flex plates are awesome and automatic bed leveling is the way to go. <laughs> my, as I get older, my patience level for dicking around with the little screws and stuff like this one's just terrible. There's, I got one for this too, with a smaller diameter um, sensor to put on this one. So but I have to make brackets in that for it. Uh, I can't remember exactly where it goes in the mix, but I haven't done much with this printer, so I'm kind of glad that I've got it so I can actually use it now. Yeah, I bought one Pro of the Easy Ables, and then I bought, I think, three, maybe, three or four, whatever. They were like, I don't know, 11 or 12 bucks, whatever they were on Black Friday for the kits, build it yourself. I watched his video. Yeah, it's not as long as you watch the video and make notes so that you don't put some of the parts on backwards and then have to redo them. I think it'll go fine. So uh, and I can print box little cases to put them in. Another good time for the uh, pet G to get used. And uh, yeah, so I can't see that being a big. Yeah, my thing with the it wasn't a problem with the sensor. It was. It was that I was too lazy and not focused enough to uh, fiddle around with all the Marlin settings and that at the time and get them working. I just never got that far because I bought the wrong one. Then I ordered the right ones. I'm going to say they were orange caps, blue caps. One was the right one for my application. I had the wrong one for the printer I was using at the time, which I don't even remember which one it was. And then by the time I, the other one arrived, you know, 50 to 75 days later, the way AliExpress stuff is for me. Um, it was too late and I, you know, moved on to other projects. I think back when I bought it, I don't think Amazon Canada was carrying a lot of uh, 3D printer parts back then. It was a while ago, a couple of years at least. So... So I got a feeling it was for my acrylic. What is that? I forget what it's called. It's a Prusa i3 clone back then. So it's it's right after the i2s and they started making the i3 style. I don't even know if Prusa, like Prusa 1, maybe Mark II time frame. I didn't know about them at the time. But the Chinese kit, the acrylic frame and everything, which I printed tons of stuff on, made money with it. It was great. It's sitting over there off to the my left. And I'm not sure that it wouldn't work if I just plugged it in right now, put an OctoPie on it, OctoPrint hooked up to it again. It would probably work. Um, but that's not going to happen for a while. Somewhere back in the background, I was downloading. Maybe that's why uh, XSplit tanked out. Maybe I was um, overloading it. Download the latest version. I already did that. Hey, John Mack, were your ears burning last night? Late? Robbie Mack and I were talking about Blue Iris and how you are the wizard of that stuff. He was telling me about his setup and... Okay, where do I go to get just Prusa Slicer? I guess I don't. All right. I'll tell it I have a Mark III. I don't have a Mini yet. It's not a 3S yet. It's just a 3.
is. Came back. I go away for a minute. Wow, 11 11. They still haven't left China yet. I had one like that. I ordered the parts to build um, Print and Play's uh, Mini, the smaller one. And uh, so I ordered up the pieces for that. And all most of it was AliExpress. I'll use one of the pies I've got here, but most of the parts came from there. And there was a cable that's a USB extension port. So you have a USB port on the outside for some reason. And um, I think it's for controller maybe. And um, they never showed as shipped. And all the other stuff started trickling in. And then uh, one set hit that limit where they got they were going to get paid. So I contacted them. They didn't respond for two or three days. And then it hit the limit. So I put in a complaint because it was like 60 bucks for the buttons and parts because I bought enough to do a couple. And um, then I forgot about that cable that never got shipped yet to complain about that. But I figured in the worst case, I just buy one here. It's not that weird of a part literally more than 10 times the price but i could do it if i had to and uh they just showed up one day two of them i was like all right <laughs> thanks Ooh. yeah i, I would imagine that this time of year the and during that 11 11 sale and stuff that the uh Stock levels were probably all over the place. Wow. Man, you guys have more trouble with, with AliExpress stuff and that kind of thing than I do. Yeah, that would suck if customs messed with it. What do they care? It's just a stupid board. I'm glad you got your money back, Ryan. No, I'm not running Blue Iris yet. I've got, what did I say last night? About seven Wise Cams. Now, do the Wise Cams, do I have to convert them to, shoot, what's the buzz term? RTSP? Whatever it is, you know the one. I've got two of them that way, but do they all have to be converted to that to work with Blue Iris? Or does it work with the, the stock firmware? I Because uh, I got a few different cameras I bought over the years, and it would be okay to use them if they would all talk to one interface. It would be kind of nice and seven to run like three or four different apps. And I've got two Wise cams I put in at work just recently for over the holidays to find out who's going and taking stuff out of my office. And I'm the computer guy, so I have all the cables and keyboards and crap in my office, and they just go and take them when I'm not there. So so they all have to be RTSP? Yeah. Have to think about that. This really doesn't matter. Don't lose anything. I don't know. I'll play with it. I can always put it back. I don't know. If, the catch to that is I got to pick out a machine. To, uh, to run the software on here and then mildly bulletproof it and everything so so that I can access it from anywhere the way you've got yours set up that you showed me at Earth, it's pretty cool okay I'm going to run the Prusa software and see if it works while I'm uh, or if we kill exploit again Yeah, I'd lose the wise recording, but it but it records inside um sorry I'm clicking OK buttons here. Uh, 
That into why not? Okay, just do it. But ask me questions, machine. Um, yeah, you lose the wise recording, but like Blue Iris records all those channel those cameras all the time, right? That's why you need a pretty gutsy machine, right? How does it? Does Blue Iris only work on cameras on that network? Or can it do remote ones as well then? Because they've got the two at work. They're under a different WISE account. But and I don't know if I'd really need those on my home Iris setup anyways. Yeah, same network. Darn. Didn't they? Um, didn't I read somewhere that that they um, that one of their Blue Iris features was you could have multi sites, like for somebody that was like a building manager or whatever. I thought that they uh, they had that. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I haven't got to the right level of deep dive onto that stuff yet, but YouTube crashed. My YouTube crashed. I went offline for a minute when XSplit went south. I seem to still be on YouTube here. I think. It'll take a minute to get there. Oh, yeah, it's way behind. Yeah, it's still going there. Yeah, I'm not playing with that right now. I'm going to slice something so I can try and print. Uh, okay. Yeah, but that would work for me, though, because I could... Get a license for the cameras at work. I don't pay for that one. And then um, and then I could have my own at home. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna need some more research before I get that stuff all figured out, but probably not happening between now and the holidays because I got way too much to do. The disastrous mess down here is only a fraction of what I have to straighten out upstairs. Because I don't spend much time up there. Yeah, well, that makes sense. I got lots of spare machines at work I can run it on, so that's not hard. Just park a laptop in a corner somewhere. And let it run. Put it in the server room, nice and cool in there. So one of the cameras is. Oh. I did this. Okay. I'm installing Prusa's stuff twice. I must have clicked it twice. Bad habit. All right. <clears throat> OK. 
I don't know what food place QT is. We're talking about food. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> I like the the uh, the one camera down in the bottom there, the whitish gray screen. That's the macro camera. It fell off earlier today. It's laying on the floor back there somewhere, looking at itself. Uh, I've moved off this chair for two or three hours now. Now that John Max kind of mentioned food, thanks. Well, I'll have to think about that. Ice Wizard, sure. Just say, okay. No, don't open any of the tutorials. I kind of know how that part works. Good enough for what I'm doing now. Thingiverse is going to be down for maintenance. I hope they come back up. Now I forgot Windows 10 has a slicer built in. Fingers. Don't stop it, Ron. That's not fair. I'm not supposed to eat any of those things, probably. I think I'm going to cook a frozen lasagna this afternoon for dinner. So, <laughs> so much for that. Yeah, eating healthy. Yeah. I go buy some groceries. I ran out of fresh stuff, so Thursday night, so not New Year's yet. New Year's resolutions will eat that stuff. What's gonna happen when I run Prusa Slicer? Oh yeah. How many drop frames we've got now? Okay, if the video goes snaky, it's because I'm running Prusa Slicer in the background. CPU is running at 96 to 100 percent, so yeah. If you lose me, we'll come back. Let's need to get the reflection of the of the monitor. Oh yeah, we're peeking it right out. Well, if it crashes again, we won't be surprised. Well, what happens when I slice after that? I'll be an experience. Man, it's crawling. Oh, shit. I gotta make a profile for this thing. Hello. 
screens are jumping all over the place. Like once again, I have two copies of it running. It's always good. That's interesting. I didn't know you could even do that. Mark 2S with an MMU. No, I won't be doing that because it'll be a 2.5 by then. Oh, there he is. Vikings here. Hey there. How's it going? Sorry, there's not much exciting happening here. I was just testing the new features in StreamYard earlier and messing around with my uh, hot end, tightening up the hot end on the D6, which is, what, two months ago I should have done that? That's when it failed. It failed a day or two before Earth when I was doing a print for Earth. And Put it on the Mark III and it worked fine. So, because the hot end had come loose and it was oozing brown, goopy snot all over the place and knocked the head loose and everything. So, what's new in, in Norway today? In Norway today. I thought Prusa Slicer had it where you could download default profiles for non-Prusa printers by now. Really? I got to do it by hand? Come on. It's Marlon. This is where I have to know stuff I don't know. Sure. Take all the details and see what happens. Default. Oh man, this is hurting. <laughs> We're at hundred percent. Is my video still holding together? Because it's uh, this machine is not up for this. If I decide to do much of this kind of thing down here, I'd have to uh, look to upgrade the video machine a little bit more.
Where am I? Nice. Christmas dinner with the fiance. Good job. Do a good job, sir. It's important. Yeah, I've always been an Intel guy. It's hard for me to jump to AMD. If I got to buy something new, I guess I might, but I, uh, I forget what's in this machine exactly. I've got a note on it somewhere. This is one that was a hand-me-down from my day job on machines that got aged out. And then I've added RAM and um, USB cards, like each camera's on its own card. And it's got, I think it's got like three drives in it. I'm only using one because I added more SSDs to it just because I had them kicking around. Um, cause originally this was going to be a video editing machine, but I've got a different one for that. So, um, kind of barter swapped for a VR rig at one point, traded a truck for it. And, uh, it's a Dell it's upstairs, but yeah, if I got to buy some, I'll look at the Ryzen's, but. This one, I think this one's an i7, if I remember right. I have a note in my stuff. I'm watching any of that today. Oh, that's not it. It's in that one. It's on my website. I'd be there. And that sounds good. How long does it take to get to Vikings House? <laughs> I wish. See if this is even up to date. Oh, it is pretty up to date. Uh, hey, there. that's how much I know about this stuff. This machine that I'm using right now actually has an AMD FX8150 CPU. 24 gigs of RAM, an HD7570 video card. Shows two drives on this list, but I think there's a third one. I think I threw another one in there because I had it. Another, I can say 200 gig SSD that was kicking around. Something around there. Huh. What do you know? Shows what I know. It's one thing I'm waiting for from AliExpress is I had to order the connectors from there. I couldn't find them like anywhere around here to uh, make an extension cable for this headset so I can tuck it around the back better. 
I'm not that tall, but the thing doesn't reach far enough to clip it up. Pardon me on a pocket, so. And everybody's having all kinds of good food. I don't have anything that good in my house to make, really. So, yeah, it's an old AMD. It's a, I don't even know how old this machine is. It was an old HP that was, we used it for monitoring the network, just as a dial machine to come in around the, the main firewall so we could get in if stuff went south. So it was just sat there and spun for years. And then when we moved to a different office, we got rid of it and threw it in the junk pile. So I was like, I know where I can use that. Put some RAM in it. A couple of drives, a bunch of USB cards now that have been added to it. But that's about it. So for, you know, a couple hundred bucks worth of parts, maybe. It's been doing a good job, but when I'm trying to... It's okay most of the time, but as soon as I'm running any other software with it, this machine was just not made for that. And right now, I downloaded stuff, and in typical Windows fashion, I can't find it. Downloads, go to downloads. You go to downloads, it's not there. Come on. when I really miss the Mac. Mac, you just click on the zip, it opens it, but tells you where to put it, and you're good. This thing you've told to extract. Oh, pain. Well, that for a calibration cube. Okie doodle. See what kind of damage we can do to this thing. <laughs> that bad thought. I wonder if there's a, uh, if there's a, uh, oh, there's probably a SD slot on that machine. Wow, Martin's here too. Holy cow. How's it going? Man. I got more viewers for test stream than I do when I really stream. This is good. Thanks for coming up, guys. First, there's not much to see. my best time to get things done. Okay, I'm just going to wander around for a minute. I'll be back. I'm just wandering around the table to the other side so I can see if I can put this in. And then I'm going to have to if only I had this really nice expansive place to do all this. Okay, let's not just blindly try and do that. Let's grab a flashlight. So I know which slot it's supposed to go in. Uh, it's just, well, it wasn't even close to the right one. That's it. It's loading it.
No, I don't need to format it. It's fine. No, I don't want to format it. It's fine. It's not accessible. Bite me. <sighs> okay, format it. What do I care? Knock yourself out. Hope it's the right drive. <laughs> oh, well. I know, warn me 12 times. Let's do it. From at compete. Okay. Close. Well, I don't know if that did it or not. All right, I'm kind of back. Is Chris Riley streaming right now? Or am I missing part of the conversation? Acts are fine. I didn't check if anybody else is streaming. I just. I don't see him. Oh, is he really? Well, then I should get off of here and we should go all hang out there. So I don't want to take anybody's attention away from what he's up to. I will uh, shut this all down. We've been on here for over an hour. So when did he start? Just now? I didn't get a notification. Thanks, YouTube. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for coming out. I'll uh, shut this down, and I'm going to go hang out over there. I know. You can watch both. I know I can on this machine. It's, I'm running it right at the edge now. And give me a chance to go grab some food, too, because I can walk around the house and watch Chris's stream. Anyways, thanks a lot, everybody. And uh, I'll see a bunch of you over there, because you're probably already there, and I'm the only one that isn't. Fear of missing out is large. Anyways, we had success getting the thing fixed, and looks like, other than XSplit crashing once, we did okay here today. 
So thanks a lot. And I'll see you guys over there. Have a great day. Ryan, enjoy your dinner tonight if you're still here. And uh, Mr. Viking, Thomas, enjoy yours too, because uh, yours is really important. Can't mess it up. No pressure. Thanks. Have a good one, guys.